Reinforcement learning is super interesting, but how can we teach robots to do things in the real world, like grabbing and placing objects, walking or threading nuts onto bolts? This is what we're going to talk about in this video today. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. But now let us get right into it. Now, reinforcement learning means training an agent to achieve a certain goal by using a reward function. The agent starts by doing something random, by taking random actions, which result either in a punishment or a reward. And if everything is set up correctly, over time, the agent will show the desired behavior. This is very simple and straightforward, provided that we remain in the software world. However, most of the real value is still produced in the physical world, and to automate stuff there, we need robots. But training robots in the real world is on the one hand not really feasible, and on the other hand, not really safe. You don't want a potentially dangerous robot to perform random actions in your home just to realize that this is not the desired behavior. So the optimal scenario would be to train a robot in the digital world and to then deploy it into the real world once it shows the behavior that we want. This is exactly what we can do with Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab by NVIDIA. Now we're not going to deploy an actual robot into the real world today, but I'm going to show you how to train a virtual robotic agent so that the next step in the process would be or could be to deploy it to actual hardware. I partnered up with NVIDIA for this video, and the best thing is that everybody can replicate the setup at home easily. If you have a somewhat decent GPU like a 3070 Ti or better, you can run this at home on your own computer. And if not, like me, if you have inferior hardware, what you can do is you can run all of this in the browser easily with a tool that I'm going to show you in this video today. To resolve all confusions that might arise due to the different tools that we use today, let me briefly give you an in a nutshell summary. Omniverse is NVIDIA's platform for collaborative and physically accurate 3D worlds. Isaac Sim is a robot focused physics simulator built on top of Omniverse. Isaac Lab is a layer for training robots inside of Isaac Sim and OpenUSD is a format for 3D models and scenes that is used in Omniverse. These are the terms that will be relevant for the simulation and training environment. Then there's also a final tool called Breath, which is NVIDIA's AI and machine learning platform that allows us to use Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab in the cloud or in the browser. Enough of the talking, let's get into the setup. As I said, I will use Breath to run Isaac Lab in the browser. If you also want to use Brev, there's a link in the description down below that will take you to the Isaac launchable GitHub repository. Otherwise, just follow the instructions for installing Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab locally. Once you are in the GitHub repo, you can scroll down and click on the Deploy Now button. Here we need to log into our NVIDIA account, create one if you don't have one yet, and then we can just deploy the launchable. This will now take some time until it's ready. Now, NVIDIA actually provided me with a coupon code that every one of you guys can use to get $10 of credits on Breath so that you can use this for about three hours. All you have to do is you have to go to breath.nvidia.com, you have to create an account, create a new organization in the top right, then go to the billing tab, scroll down to redeem code and enter the code neural9. Once the machine is booted up and the script completed the execution, we can scroll down to our links and click on the link for port 80. The default password is password and after typing it in, we get VS code in our browser. You can see we already have a folder called Isaac Lab with a shell script in it. The installation comes with a ton of predefined environments, agents and reward functions. We can run the training process by targeting the train.py script and specifying a task. The results can be seen by navigating to the viewer endpoint where Isaac Sim is rendering everything. The most basic task we can run is the card pole balancing. We have a card that can move left and right and is rewarded for balancing a pole. It learns to do that because of how the reward function is defined. But there's also a task where a humanoid agent learns to walk into a specific direction or an animal like robot. There is an environment where a robot arm called Franca learns to lift a cube and bring it to a target position, and also one where such an arm learns to open a cabinet's drawer using the handle. We can adjust training parameters and teach the robots how to perform these actions. During the training process, we can watch how the robots get better over time. At the end, we can use the fully trained models by using the play.py script and targeting a specific checkpoint. This replays our final result. Here we can see what this looks like with an ant-like agent that learns to walk. In the beginning, the movement seems entirely random, but it gets better and better over time. And once we're done, we can rerun the final version using the play PY script. Now there is a full guide on how to take this result and deploy it into an actual robot, how to transfer the policy. I will not cover this part because I lack the expertise for it, but this is essentially the training process up until this point. 
you train a digital or virtual agent in the software world, and then you deploy it into a physical robot. The most interesting aspect of this is, of course, to build your own examples and train customized robots. To keep things simple and to not escalate this video into a complete Isaac Lab course, I will use a very simple and minimal customization example. I'll use the already existing ant environment and modify its reward function. Instead of learning to walk into a specific direction, I wanted to jump as high as possible. So I will reward a high position of the ant body. For this, we use the Isaac Lab shell script to create a new external project. In my case, I call the folder custom project and choose ant jumper as the project name. For the workflow, I use the direct single agent and for the reinforcement learning library, I pick SKRL with proximal policy optimization. The three essential files here are the endjumper env.py, the endjumper config.py, and the SKRL settings, which are in a YAML file. All of these are located in source, project name, project name, tasks direct, project name. Now let us copy the original and environment. For this, we navigate to the source folder inside of Isaac Lab. Then we go to Isaac Lab tasks, Isaac Lab tasks direct, and there we find the ant environment Python file, which contains the config as well as the environment itself. As we can see, the ant environment inherits from the locomotion environment, which is much more complex. Instead of inheriting from the ant, we can also directly inherit from the locomotion environment and override some key functions. We make sure that our environment tracks the previous and current height of the agent to measure the jump progress. Then we also make sure that the agent is actually rewarded for its current height as well as for its jump progress. For the config, we just copy the ant environment config class, inherit from it and modify four parameters. Finally, we also copy the SKRL PPO config YAML from the ant environment into our custom project to make sure that we have the exact same settings. That's basically it. To now use our project, we need to install it as a Python package. For this, we run python -m pip install -e and we point to the project name directory inside of the source directory. Once we're done with this, we can run the list and helper script to confirm that our environment is actually found. In our case, we can see the template and jumper direct v0 task. So all we need to do now is to run the training script as we did before using this custom task. When we now watch our ants, we can see that their initially random movements start to look more and more like jumping attempts over time. Some of the ants even perform some pretty solid backflips. After one to two minutes, our ants learn to jump pretty high. Of course, we can improve these results by changing the settings to allow for a longer training process. As I already said, this is a very minimal example. You can customize this entire environment, including all shapes and joints. For this, you would need to have some advanced skills though. Specifically, you will need to know how to create your own 3D simulations and objects with OpenUSD. And you will need to understand the basics of robotics and robot simulation. I will not cover these topics today, but in the description, you will find two high quality pathways from NVIDIA, one about OpenUSD and one about robotics. With these skills, you can not only customize small aspects of the simulation or of the training, like for example, the reward function, you can customize absolutely everything about the environment. You can have multiple agents interacting with one another. You can have obstacles. You can define absolutely everything. The courses you will find down below are free self-paced courses, so I would definitely recommend you check them out. So that's it for this video today. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Of course, also don't forget to check out the links in the description down below to the various NVIDIA tools and pathways that I mentioned in the video. And as always, don't forget to hit the notification bell and subscribe to this channel to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in our next video and bye.